Hello, with you. Welcome back to the Dakshinai Classroom channel. My name is Sunil Pratap, and I am teaching you inorganic chemistry. And in inorganic chemistry, today we'll be talking about a chapter which has a lot of importance in uh, your mains exam, JE mains, and also the NEET. It is rarely asked in advanced exam, but it is definitely asked in mains exam. And there is a possibility that one question will definitely come from this topic. The topic is hydrogen and its compounds, right? So hydrogen and its compounds, uh, we'll be talking about how, what are the compounds of hydrogen, how hydrogen exists, in which forms does hydrogen exist. And then we'll be talking about one of the important factors from where the question is definitely asked, and that is hardness of water, right? So let's begin the topic without delay. Uh, we'll be starting with the position of position of hydrogen in periodic table, the position of hydrogen in periodic table. We'll be starting with position of hydrogen in periodic table. Why? Now, if you see hydrogen, Hydrogen can exist in two forms, that is H plus and H minus, both the forms, hydride form also and H plus form also. Now, H plus form is similar to alkali metals. H plus form is similar to alkali metals, whereas H minus form, H minus form is similar to halogens. Also, hydrogen exists in dihydrogen form. It exists in dihydrogen form. So when it is existing in dihydrogen form, which means it is, it is uh, similar to the Halogens. Why? Because halogens exist in Cl2 or F2 form. Cl2 or F2 form. So, if you see hydrogen, hydrogen has two different behaviors. One behavior is similar to the alkali metals and the other behavior is similar to the halogens. Right? So, there is always a debate where will be the hydrogen placed. Now, hydrogen can be placed in two different groups. The first group and the 17th group. The first group being the alkali metals and the 17th group be being the halogens. Now, the question always arises, where should we place the hydrogen? Definitely, the if you see the modern periodic table, it is always placed above the, above the group 1. But it can also be placed above the halogens, right? Because of the similar properties. So, Sometimes it is placed above uh, group 1, sometimes it is placed above group 17. The modern periodic table that we use, it is placed above group 1. So, if sometimes you get a periodic table where hydrogen is placed above group 17, don't question that periodic table because there is a possibility that we are considering the halogen factor in it or the similarity with the halogen that we are talking about. So, it can be placed above both the groups, either the first group or the 17th group. But if you are asked in the paper which group it is placed in and which will never be asked because this is the most simplest question that is there. Uh, you'll always rise the first group because the modern periodic table that we study, we studied in the first group, right? So it will be group one. Now, when we talk, this is the, uh, no, uh, the different behavior of hydrogen or the behavior of hydrogen and different positions that it can be placed in. Now, when we, talk, we have talked about the different position, we'll talk about the occurrence of hydrogen, right? The occurrence of hydrogen. In the occurrence of hydrogen, the hydrogen can be found in two forms, the elemental form and the isotopic form. Elemental form you all know, that is H2, that is, that you have seen, that you have, that you have known for a very long period of time, dihydrogen. The isotopic forms are protium, deuterium, tritium, protium, deuterium, tritium, wherein what is isotopes? The protons, the protons remain same. The protons remain same, but the neutrons, neutrons change. The protons remain same, but the neutrons change. Okay, so these are isotopic forms. In isotopic forms, we have protium, deuterium, tritium. Now, the important point here is that the tritium is radioactive. A question was asked in J mains 2019 regarding this, that which of the following is radioactive. So you should remember this, that the, um, that the isotopic form of hydrogen, that is tritium, is radioactive in nature. It is radioactive in nature. So this, this should be on your tips. This should be on your tips that the, uh, which form? The tritium form or the isotopic form of hydrogen, tritium, is radioactive in nature, right? Now, next. Now, when you talked about the occurrence, the elemental form and the isotopic form, now we'll move forward to the methods of preparation of dihydrogen. How dihydrogen is prepared? How we can prepare dihydrogen in labs or in industrial preparation? Now, let's talk about it. See, the first method is lean method. Now, I'll suggest you one thing. Never, never remember the name of the process in this 
because there is rarity that they will ask you with the name. They will ask you with the name is a rarity, right? They sometimes ask it, but that is a rarity, right? So you should need to remember what the reaction is. And through that reaction, you can okay say that this process is also known as lean process. The reaction is more important than the name. Right in an organic chemistry, but when you go to organic chemistry, the name is important than the reaction because the the name they get sometimes ask you directly that this is the name of the reaction, what is the mechanism or what will be the product form, right? So we talk about lean process. What is lean process? Lean process we take iron and we react it with H two O. We react it with H two O. H two O in the form of steam directly react nahi karenge. Kaise react karenge? We react it with in the form of steam. Now what will happen here is that iron iron will oxidize itself iron will oxidize itself now you have hydrogen so this is oxidizing itself and converting into fe3 plus or you can say fe2 plus whatever be the case both the forms is fine in this the, both the forms are present right so it gets converted into fe3 plus or fe2 plus when it is oxidizing itself it will reduce something else so it cannot reduce oxygen because oxygen is already in its reduced form that is o2 minus so it will reduce hydrogen it will reduce hydrogen because hydrogen is in plus one st oxidation state hydrogen is in plus one oxidation state so it will reduce hydrogen and produce and if it reduces hydrogen it will produce h2 gas so from here if you see this this is the is the reduction reduction of what reduction of hydrogen reduction of hydrogen from h plus to h0 and this is oxidation which means with oxidation and it oxidation of what iron oxidation of what iron to plus three or plus two oxidation state both are possible in this case right so if you see you can talk this you can say this about any other metal right if you take a metal metal has a tendency to oxidize itself and reduce other elements right so if it is oxidizing itself and reducing other elements what will it form it if, it, if in this case it will form hydrogen gas it will form hydrogen gas now let's talk about another method bosch process and the name is important the name is important why name is important because sometimes they will directly ask you about this process through the name now what happens in bosch process you take coke coke as in carbon right you take carbon you take carbon in the form of coke don't don't say we'll take it in the form of graphite or diamond we are taking it in the form of coke carbon in the form of coke is taken and it is reacted with h2o it is reacted with water in the presence of al2o3 and cr2o3 need not remember it right need not remember it not very important right what happens here is now carbon also has a reducing tendency it reduces something else and oxidizes itself and you will study this in metallurgy you will study this in metallurgy where you will you'll know that carbon is used as an oxidizer as a reducing agent so carbon has a tendency of oxidizing itself and reducing other elements now again in this case carbon has if is it was if it is oxidizing itself it will ox get oxidized to co and reduce hydrogen to h2 and reduce hydrogen to h2 and h2 in the form of gas both both are in the form of gas this is known as water gas this is known as water gas right this is known as water gas right because it is produced from water so water gas nothing else right now now you have two gases in it co and h2 you need to get h2 because this is preparation of h2 gas so if it is a preparation of h2 gas and you require h2 what will happen what will happen the hap you need to remove you need to remove co you need to remove co how will you remove co you'll use nickel what happens is nickel has a tendency to absorb co nickel has a tendency to absorb co so if it has a tendency to absorb co what will happen it will absorb co and uh, h2 gas will be can be obtained h2 gas can be obtained so nickel will absorb co and h2 gas can be obtained right the first thing so nickel can be used to remove co secondly h2 again second process is copper ammonical chloride copper ammonical chloride is used in this form so copper ammonical chloride so you have chloride you have copper you have ammonia you have all the three forms the so copper ammonical chloride is used and when it reacts with co and h2 it absorbs again it absorbs co it absorbs co so when it absorbs co it releases h2 gas it releases h2 gas so in bosch process what we studied we studied that carbon in the form of coke reacts with h2 right and when it reacts with h2o it gives co and h2 gas 
Now CO and H2 both are in the form of gas, which is known as water gas, important name. Now CO and H2, you need to remove H2 or you need to extract H2 from this mixture. So what you use, you can use nickel, which absorbs CO and gives you H2 gas. Or you can use copper ammonical chloride, that is CuCO2Cl2 plus NH4OH, and it will also absorb CO and give you H2 gas. So this is how you can get obtain H2 gas from this process. Now the third method is electrolysis of water. The third method is electrolysis of water or acidified water. Now what happens here is you use H2O and H2O dissociates in the form of H plus and OH minus. H plus and OH minus. Right? Now at cathode H plus will go. Now, how do you remember this? You remember by CNR. CNR Rao was one of the famous Bharat Ratan uh, recipient scientists of India, right? CNR Rao, sorry, right? In chemistry. So, CNR Rao means cathode negative reduction. Cathode negative reduction. Right? So in cathode, negative charge will be there and the reduction will be there. So if cathode is negative, which one will go? Positive or negative towards it? If cathode is negative, the positive will be attracted towards it, right? The positive will be attracted towards it. So the H plus will move towards cathode. So when the H plus gets moved towards cathode, what happens in cathode? A reduction. What happens in cathode? Reduction. How do you remember it? CNR. Cathode negative reduction. The rest will remain opposite. You, if you do opposite, you get APO. What is there? Uh, anode positive oxidation. Anode positive oxidation. So what is happening here is at cathode, the H plus is going and it is being reduced to H2 gas. So you get H2 gas, right? But at anode, there is a different scenario going on. Yes, for us, important is at cathode because we are using it to prepare H2 gas. But at anode, you need to remember a different form. See, at anode, there is OH minus going. That is OH minus going. Now, OH minus is going, so it gets reduced to OH free radical. It gets reduced to OH free radical and releases two electrons. And releases two electrons, right? When free radical is being created, this reacts with each other to form a peroxide. This reacts with each other to form peroxide, right? It forms a peroxide. Two electrons remain the same, right? And this peroxide, because it is unstable, because it is unstable, it forms, because it is unstable, it forms H2O plus O2 gas. It forms H2O plus O2 gas. And two electrons, that is from the, from initial, it is constant. Right? So, what is happening at cathode? Cathode at simple, because cathode has negative and causes reduction H plus moves towards cathode H plus moves towards cathode and gets reduced to form H2 gas but at anode what happens is that you have OH minus and those OH minus gets first oxidized to a free radical and that free radical when absorbs an electron uh, sorry when free radical combines with each other to form a peroxide and that peroxide is because unstable it gets converted into H2O and O2 gas right simple reaction so sometimes they'll ask you a question that during the electrolysis of h2o what is formed at cathode and what is formed at anode this is the question that can be asked to you this can be a question that can be asked to you so you know at cathode it forms h2 gas and at anode it forms o2 gas and h2 gets back into the, the solution right next from the natural gases, from the natural gases. Natural gas is simple. When you use CH4 methane and reacts with O2 in the presence of nickel and chromium, in the presence of nickel and chromium, you get you get uh, carbon monoxide plus H2 gas. You get carbon monoxide and H2 gas. So from natural gas, it is as simple as that. That when a natural gas reacts with O2 it, in the presence of nickel and chromium, it can give it gives carbon monoxide and H2 gas. Right? No. We've talked about a lot about industrial preparation. These are all industrial preparation where we talked about the lane process where we have Fe. Then we talked about Bosch process. We have Coke. Then we talked about electrolysis, which we, we electrolyze or acidified water. Then we talk about natural gas. These are all these are all industrial methods. Now we talk about labs method, right? How do we prepare it in labs? Now in lab method, H2 production sometimes is similar to what we produce in industry. And sometimes it is different. So let's talk about what is similar, right? First, we use iron. We use iron. Now you have iron here. 
iron again what i told you in the first reaction in the lane process that iron has a tendency to oxidize itself or a metal has a tendency to oxidize itself and it will reduce something or the other so again here see iron and hcl iron and hcl now iron will oxidize itself and gets converted into fe2 plus so it is oxidizing itself now iron is oxidizing itself so it will reduce something or the other it cannot reduce cl why because cl is in minus one oxidation state so cl cannot go beyond minus one it cannot go lower to minus one so what happens here is it oxidize it uh, it reduces h h is in plus one oxidation state it reduces h and forms h2 gas it forms h2 gas so the metal what happens is it reacts with H, dilute hcl and dilute hcl and um, uh, oxidizes uh, oxidizes itself to get uh, 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 you have iron here oxidizes itself to get a chloride and reduces hydrogen and reduces hydrogen to form h2 gas again similarly a metal mn oxidizes itself to plus or two oxidation state and gets mnso4 right oxidation this is oxidation and reduces hydrogen to get H2 gas and reduces hydrogen to get H2 gas. So you have two reactions here, oxidation and reduction reaction. You have two reactions here, oxidation and reduction reaction. Now, similarly, we talk about other metals also. Now we talk about amphoteric metals. What are amphoteric metals? These are metals which reacts with acid and base, both of them, and reacts in a similar way as they react with acid or reacts in a similar way as they react with base. So they have both the tendency. They can react with acids, they can react with base. And whenever they are reacting with acid or base, they form H2 gas. This amphoteric name comes from the oxide they formed, which are amphoteric, which are amphoteric. Amphoteric oxides means which reacts with both acids and base. So this is the similarly, this is, we talk about these metals. Now what these metals do? What these metals do? Again, the simpler, what our metal does? is it oxidizes itself and reduces hydrogen. So it is oxidizing itself and reducing hydrogen, right? So hydrogen is reduced and metal is oxidized. So this was a similar reaction that we talked about in the first reaction that is iron. One. Now let's change it and react with base. Now when it is reacting with base, C to this, Z plus H-O-N, right? This is the, Zn will oxidize itself and reduce what? And reduce what? It cannot reduce Na because Na lies higher up in the electrochemical series. So it will reduce H. It will reduce H. So it reduces H and it forms it forms H2 plus H2. So this is O. Now we have in the solution Zn2 plus and ONA minus. We have these things. We have these things, right? These things will react with each other and form and form Zn ONA whole twice. And this ZnONa whole twice can be written as Na2ZnO2. It can be written as Na2ZnO2. So what Zn is doing, it is doing what it did with HCl. Where in HCl, it reduced hydrogen. Again, in NaOH, it is reducing hydrogen to produce H2 as H2 gas and also releasing a salt that is Na2ZnO2. So similar to what it did in, with HCl, HCl. Again, aluminium. Now, aluminium has a tendency to go to plus 3 oxidation state. So, the salt that it will form will always be in plus 3, oxid plus three oxidation state. So, this is AlCl3. Again, similarly, aluminium with NaOH, H2 gas and NaAlO2, right? Aluminium, here is which oxidation state? See, Na is in plus 1 oxidation state. Aluminium is plus 3 and oxygen in, two, each oxygen in 2 minus. So you have all four plus, right? The plus three oxidation state. This is also known as Unoyo's method. Unoyo's method. You don't need to remember it, but you need to remember it. You get a pure form of H2 gas from this method. You get one of the purest form of H2 gas in, from this method. So that is more important. You need, need not to remember what which, which name it is, right? So that is it. Now, let's talk about types of hydrogen. The first we talked about was the occurrence. Now we talked about types of. So hydrogen is of three types atomic hydrogen also known as active hydrogen now atomic hydrogen is prepared from hydrogen right when hydrogen is placed in an electric discharge and electricity is passed through it it gets broken broken into two parts this is 2h and this these hydrogens are known as 
एक्टिव हाइड्रोजन सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग यूर टेकिंग हाइड्रोजन गैस यूर पासिंग इलेक्ट्रिक इलेक्ट्रिक डिस्चार्ज थ्रू इट द हाइड्रोजन गेट्स डिवाइडेड इंटू टू पार्ट और होमो होमोलिटिक फिजन टेक्स प्लेस एंड दैट फिजन ब्रेक्स इन टू टू एच राइट सो टू यू गेट टू एच दिस इज नोन एज एक्टिव हाइड्रोजन दिस इज नोन एज एक्टिव हाइड्रोजन अंडरस्टैंड दिस पार्ट दैट वेन फ्रॉम हाइड्रोजन एच टू गैस यू गेट द एलिमेंटल एटोमिक हाइड्रोजन दैट इज नोन एज एक्टिव हाइड्रोजन अंडरस्टूड दिस पार्ट नेक्स्ट वट हैपन्स इन नेशन हाइड्रोजन वेन अ मेटल रिएक्ट विद एच ओ ए सी और एन एसिड एंड प्रोड्यूस अ एलिमेंटल एच एलिमेंटल एच राइट दिस इज नोन एज नेशन हाइड्रोजन सो ड्यूरिंग अ रिएक्शन इफ एन एटोमिक हाइड्रोजन इज प्रोड्यूस्ड यू डोंट कॉल इट अड्रोजन एटोमिक हाइड्रोजन बट यू कॉल इट सिंपल एच During a reaction, when simple H is produced, that is known as nascent hydrogen, right? And it is very reactive, so it does not stay there for very long time. It reacts with something else and forms something, uh, some some compound. So that is known as um, nascent hydrogen. What is the difference between atomic hydrogen and nascent hydrogen? Atomic hydrogen is formed from formed from electric discharge. During the electric discharge, it is formed. Whereas the nascent hydrogen is formed during the reaction. So during the reaction, if it is being formed, it is known as nascent hydrogen. When it is dissociated from H two, it is known as active hydrogen. Then you have dihydrogen or elemental form that you know. Now that elemental form can be divided into two groups, two parts: ortho hydrogen and para hydrogen. Okay, what is the difference between two? The difference is in nuclear spin. The difference is in nuclear spin. The nuclear spin of both these uh, dihydrogens will be different. What is there? See, if The nucleus spin is in one direction. See, here it is in one direction. The above one, ortho hydrogen, it is in one direction. It is going like this, and again this. So, if it is in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction, both should be similar. So, if you have nucleus spin in similar direction, then it is known as ortho hydrogen. Then it is known as ortho hydrogen. So, it's mu sp. Okay, mu, which which means it's or uh, it's uh, di dipole moment or its uh, magnetic moment will never be zero because you have different you have in same direction both the uh, spins are in same direction so th that can never be zero but in para hydrogen what happens is both are in opposite direction both are in opposite direction so here the spin becomes nuclear spin becomes zero here the nuclear spin becomes zero so when the nuclear spin when the nuclear spin is in a same direction that is known as ortho hydrogen and when the nuclear spin is opposite direction that is known as para hydrogen now same nuclear spin if you have same nuclear spin okay that is ortho and it is relatively more stable it is relatively more stable if you have same nuclear spin it is relatively more stable if you have opposite nuclear spin that is para and it is more electrically conductive less stable and more electrically conductive acha how do you remember it simple way you have talked about what ortho compounds are so in ortho uh, ortho compounds the they are in almost one direction they are almost in one direction so ortho you can remember it by ortho compounds or ortho product in the from the organic that when they are in same direction they are known as ortho and in para you know that the groups are in opposite direction so when they are in opposite direction they are para so similarly you can remember these this is a simple way of remembering but remember this that ortho is more stable para is less stable okay and or para is more conducting ortho is less conducting lights okay so we have talked about hydrogen and dihydrogen uh, we have talked about this is important ortho and para you need to remember this okay now let's talk about compounds of hydrogen let's talk about about compounds of hydrogen now the first compound of hydrogen is hydrogen peroxide first compound of hydrogen is hydrogen peroxide that is pale blue liquid it is a pale blue liquid what it is it is a pale blue liquid preparation how is the preparation first we'll talk about the industrial preparation right industrially it is prepared from 2 ethyl anthraquinone right and you need to remember this question this you need to remember it because they will definitely ask you this if a question in hydrogen of hydrogen peroxide comes then two things will definitely be there the first thing is its structures and the second thing is the preparation from the ethyl anthraquinone this is very 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 important reaction so important mark it as important in your notebooks and if you can mug it up mug it up whatever happens this there is a there is a 90% possibility that this question might come so let's see what happens see you have ethyl anthraquinone you can also have butyl you can also have butyl in it right so you can have butyl you can have ethyl no worries now you use h2pd now 
H2PD is a reducing agent. It is a reducing agent and you will study it in organic chemistry that H2PD is used for reduction. Now what happens here is that H2PD reduces what? It reduces the carbonyl. It reduces the carbonyl. Right? It reduces carbonyl to give OH. It reduces carbonyl to give OH. So it reduces the carbonyl. So first the reduction takes place. First the reduction takes place. So the first reaction is reduction. The first reaction is reduction. Now what is happening here is from quinone, from ketone, you are forming quinol, that is alcohol. Right? From quinone, you are forming quinol. So the name remains same. The only thing remains uh, changes is the suffix. From ethyl anthraquinol, quinone, it gets converted to ethyl anthraquinol, that is alcohol. Now, then you react it with O2. Now, what O2 will do, O2 will oxidize it again, back to again oxidize. And when it is oxidizing, it will grab the hydrogen and form H2O2. It will grab the hydrogen and form H2O2. So, O2 acts as oxidizing agent. See, the initial product and the final product are the same. The only difference is, here you are using H2 and that H2 is removed to form H2O2. Right? So the first reaction is reduction and the second reaction is oxidation. Second reaction is oxidation reaction. Right? Second reaction is oxidation reaction from where? From in quinol, they can they, they convert into quinone again and form H2. This is very important. They can ask you which what, what is reduction, which is oxidation, how the process is taking place. Right? Okay. This was first method. Now we talk about the second method. By electrolysis. Now what happens in electrolysis? See. You use H2SO4. H2SO4 dissociates into H plus and HSO4 minus. That H plus in cathode. Now again remember CNR cathode negative reduction. So cathode negative reduction what happens? H plus takes an electron and converts into H2. Now at anode what happens at anode? At anode HSO4 is there. It combines to form H2S2O8. What is the structure? Name is Marshall's acid. What is the structure? If you have studied my chemical bonding class, I have told you what peroxy disulfuric acid forms. It is similar to this. See, the structure will be similar to this. The structure will be similar to this. Right? The structure will be similar to this. Right? Now, this is the structure of Marshall's acid. Now this Marshall's acid when reacted with H2, this Marshall's acid when reacted with H2, what will it form? See, now you need to consider two things. If you are breaking this bond, this is a peroxy bond and it will have a tendency to break this bond because it is unstable, what will happen? There will be positive charge on sulfur and negative charge on oxygen. Positive charge on sulfur, sorry, positive charge on sulfur, positive charge on sulfur and negative charge on oxygen. Now what will happen? You have H2. So what will happen? H OH will be attracted towards the negative char positive charge because OH has negative charge. You are using water, right? So in water, you have two ions, H plus and OH minus. So OH minus will be attracted to H and S and H will be attracted, H plus will be attracted to O. So when H plus is attracted to O, it forms H2O2. It forms H2O2 because it will break from here and it forms bond here. Okay? So it forms and then you can forget H2SO4, right? Similarly, this is a compound. If you are attaching it with OH, so it will be H2SO4, right? So when H2H2O8 is poured in water, it forms H2SO4 and H2O2. So what is happening here is, at cathode, reduction is taking place and H2 gas is being prepared. At anode, the first, the, the, the polymerization or the combination of HSO4- minus takes place and forms Marshall's acid. And that Marshall acid, when poured in water or kept in water, dissociates into H2SO4 and H2O2. Similarly, in this case, NH4, HSO4. What happens here is, again, H plus and NHO4, HSO4 minus takes place. H plus goes to cathode and reacts with E minus and forms H2 gas. Again, similarly at anode, this combines with, this combines with, again, to form similar compound like Marshall's acid. And that then, it uh, then it dissociates in water, in presence of water to form NH4 whole twice SO4 plus H2. Right? It forms NH4 whole twice SO4 plus H2. Right? Okay. So, next, next. We'll talk about next thing. Lab method. We'll talk about lab method. How in lab it is produced. Right? In lab method, we use a peroxide and react it with dilute H2SO4. Right? Dilute H2SO4. So peroxide is similar to Ba2 plus and O2 2 minus. You're using H2SO4 which gives you H plus. So this H plus reacts with O2 to give peroxide. And then remains SO42 minus the NIN which reacts with Ba2 plus 
to give you BSO4. So BSO4 is formed and साथ में H2O2 सो, right? So BSO4 and H2O2 both are formed, right? Okay. Now this BSO4 is curdy white precipitate. Sometimes they will ask you a white sulfate precipitate is formed. Remember it, a white sulfate precipitate will be, will always have a tendency that it will be BSO4. So if in any question they ask of a second group element forming a white precipitate of sulfate, it 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 will be around 90-95-1%, it will be tendency to form BSO4, right? Next, again, oxone Na2O2. Na2 again, Na plus and O2, 2 minus. This is Na2 plus, you have 2 Na plus, right? This reaction is H plus, so it forms, this reaction is H plus, so it forms peroxide, and this reaction is sulfate, so it forms Na plus. Simple reaction, right? Only displacement of ions, right? So displacement of ions, H plus is going to oxygen, BA is coming to here, Na is going to sulfate, H is going to here. So the only displacement of ions is taking place, right? Okay, now let's talk about the structure. This is the most common structure of perox hydrogen peroxide, right? That is Bayer structure or book-like structure. Bayer structure or book-like structure. So it is kind of an open book structure. It is kind of an open book structure, right? And open laptop structure. It has different angles. So you need to remember these angles, right? So somehow remember these angles, which is 115 degrees and 95 degrees in one case. And second is 90.2 degrees and 101.9 degrees in second case. So you have two different cases, right? Base structure, now base structure is open book structure, right? It is an open book structure. Now, the second structure which is rarely taught somewhere is King Z structure. Why? Because uh, usually the structure that we found of hydrogen peroxide is of, is book, open book structure. So we don't find King Z structure usually. So King Z structure is similar to this structure. This is the structure of King Z structure. And it is is usually shown when you when you show H2O2's oxidizing properties. So when you show H2O2's oxidizing properties, you show King Z structure. You show King Z structure. Now King Z structure, it easily breaks this bond and it forms H2O and O2. So there are two forms. Remember, bare structure and King Z structure. So bare structure is book, open book like. King Z structure is oxidizing agent, similar to oxidizing agent. All right. Also, remember this thing. That sometimes they might ask you which is the most common one. So remember, bare structure is the most common one. King Z structure is there, but Bayer structure is the most common one, right? So you, you need to remember it, Bayer structure will be the most common one. So when they ask you, if you have two structures, which one is the most common one? You will first answer the Bayer structure. If you have, if, if they are asking you multiple correct, then you can say King Z structure is also there. Also, if Bayer structure is not there, then you will answer the King Z structure. Then you will answer the King Z structure. Understood? Okay. Next, test of hydrogen peroxide. Test of hydrogen peroxide. What happens in test of hydrogen peroxide? Okay, let's see. See, when you pour K2Cr2O7 in H2SO4 and H2O2, right? When you pour Cr2, Cr2, oh, C, uh, this is chromium has plus 6 oxidation state. Chromium has plus 6 oxidation state. So when you pour a plus 6 chromium in H2O2, it forms CrO5. Now, what is CrO5? If you see here, you'll see that you'll say CrO5 means oxygen minus 2 oxidation state. So Cr will have plus 10 oxidation state. Wrong. Wrong. What will happen is the structure is something like this. A butterfly structure. A butterfly structure. A blue butterfly structure will be formed. And therefore, now from here, if you calculate the oxidation state, minus 1, minus 1. So this will be plus 2. Minus 1, minus 1. This will be plus 2. And minus plus 2. So plus 6. Oxidation state remains same. Oxidation state remains same. Only the structure will be formed. Okay, this structure will be formed. This this reaction was asked in IIT J mains 2020 with a combination of chromyl chloride test. So you will study chromyl chloride test in chloride chlor uh, halogen compounds, and in that you will also know that this reaction was attached to a question. This reaction was attached to a question. There was they, they were giving plus six oxidation state was they were formed, and they reacted it with H2O2. And they said a compound is being formed. So that compound was CrO5. That compound was CrO5. Now, when CrO5, when CrO5 reacts with H2SO4, when CrO5 reacts with H2SO4, it forms exchange of ions. Again, exchange of ions takes place. Cr2SO4 whole thrice. Cr2SO4 whole thrice. It forms Cr2SO4 whole thrice. Right? So this, this compound is formed. Right? So this is the compound that is formed when you place it in uh, acid. Right? So this is green in color. So what happens is, you, you, you are using an orange color, K2Cr2O7. That K2Cr2O7 when reacts with H2O2 forms a blue color CrO5. 
So you get a blue color CRO5 and that is butterfly shape and then you pour H2SO4 in it and you get a green color CR2SO4 whole thrice and you can definitely say that it is chrome or H2O2 is present in it. Next, H2O2 and Ki. Now H2O2 has both the properties oxidizing and reducing. So depending upon what the others show property, when what is the properties of other elements, it shows its property. So here I minus cannot go beyond it and get reduced to I2 minus. This is not possible. This reaction is not possible. It can go maximum to I minus, which means it is in its lowest oxidation state. Now, I'm telling you one concept. Remember this concept. Something which is in its lowest oxidation state, something which is in its lowest oxidation state, it will always have a tendency of reducing agent, which means oxidizing itself oxidizing itself and reducing its uh, others and reducing others reducing oxidizing itself and reducing others so it has a tendency of reducing it something which is in its highest oxidation state something which is in its highest oxidation state then it has a tendency of being an oxidizing agent which means reducing itself Reducing itself and oxidizing others. Reducing itself and oxidizing others. Right? So this is it. Now iodine is it is is it is in its lowest oxidation state. So when it is in its lowest oxidation state, what is it? It behaves as a reducing agent. So it will oxi reduce others and oxidize itself. So from here, see iodine is oxidizing itself, and what is happening here is it is reducing oxygen it is reducing oxygen see oxygen is being converted for it is in here oxygen is in minus one oxidation state here it gets converted to minus two oxidation state right oxygen oxygen gets converted into minus two oxidation state so because oxygen is in get, getting converted into minus two oxidation state i can clearly say that oxygen is being reduced and iodine is being oxidized iodine is being oxidized so this is the reaction takes place now this iodine when poured in starch or kept in a starch paper solution forms a complex and gives a deep blue coloration gives a deep, deep blue coloration so iodine with the starch gives deep blue coloration so when you use h2o2 and react with ki it forms i2 and that i2 when poured in starch because it is forming a complex it gives a blue color coloration it gives a blue color coloration right next third tiso4 now TiSO4 when it reacts with H2O2, what happens here is uh, H2O2 gets reacts, reacts with H2TiO4. This is per titanic acid and forms H2SO4, forms H2SO4. Now per titanic acid is an of, of orange color. So TiSO4 when it reacts with H2O2 uh, gives you an orange color per titanic acid. Gives you an orange color per titanic acid. So these are the three tests that happens. The first test is where K2Cr2O7 is used. And K2Cr2O7, K2Cr2O7, what is happening here is an orange color K2Cr2O7 is being used that gets converted into CrO4, CrO5. Let's get converted into CrO5, which is blue in color. And that CrO5 when reacts with H2O2, H2SO4 gives Cr2SO4 whole thrice, which is green in color. Right? Next, H2O2 when reacts with Ki, what happens? It, re it oxidizes I minus. It oxidizes I minus and converts into I2 and this I2 when it reacts with starch gives a blue deep color, deep blue color coloration right and therefore we can say H2O2 is present. Next TiSO4 when it reacts with H2O2 gives per titanic acid which is orange in color which is orange in color and this is how you form um, per titanic acid or you can identify hydrogen peroxide you can identify hydrogen peroxide right okay so last thing to is last thing use of H2O2 it is used for restoring color. It is used for restoring color. What happens in color? In usually paints, we have lead sulfate. White paints, we have lead sulfate. And this lead sulfate, over the period of time, reacting with H2S gets converted to lead sulfide. And this sulfide is in black color. This sulfide is of black color. So you have black color sulfide. You have black color sulfide. You have black color sulfide. When you have black color sulfide, you need to restore it. So use, you use H2O2. You use H2O2. What H2O2 does is, H2O2 acts as an oxidizing agent. H2O2 acts as an oxidizing agent. And when it, when it is acting as an oxidizing agent, it oxidizes PBS to form PBSO4. It oxidizes PBS to PBSO4. So sulfur is oxidized to oxygen. See, 
Sulfur is oxidized. Sulfur is oxidized to sulfate. How do I know sulfur is oxidized? Originally, sulfur here sulfur is minus two oxidation state, but here it is in plus six oxidation state. It is in plus six oxidation. So sulfur is oxidized from minus two plus six. Sulfur gets converted is oxidized and H two two is reduced. So it gets back converted into PBSO four. PBSO four was already white color. Again, it gets converted into PBSO four. So H two O two can be used for restoring paints. Can be used for restoring paints. It can also be used as temporary disinfectant. What happens here is H two O two decomposes to give H two and O nascent oxygen. This nascent oxygen reacts with bacteria. This nascent oxygen reacts with bacteria, and when it reacts with bacteria, it releases gas. It oxidizes that bacteria. It reacts with bacteria and releases gas, or you can say it decomposes the bacteria. It decomposes the bacteria. It decomposes the bacteria, and when it decomposes the bacteria, it releases gas, and therefore the water or whatever wherever the bacteria has been generated that is gets disinfected. So you have two uses of hydrogen peroxide. So let's go over the whole chapter, whole topic that we have studied today. Let's take a review, uh, revision. The position of periodic table that we talked about, the position of periodic table anomalous behavior because of its anomalous behavior, it acts as H plus also and H minus also, and because it can act as dihalogen or dihydrogen, and therefore it, it its position is always questionable, right? Occurrence, it forms in elemental form and isotopic form in elemental isotopic form it has three forms protium deuterium tritium which out of which tritium is radioactive methods of preparation methods of preparation lane process simple iron gets iron oxidizes itself and reduces hydrogen bosch process carbon oxidizes itself and reduces hydrogen and because because it is forming carbon monoxide so to remove carbon monoxide i use nickel and cuper cuprous ammonical chloride electrolysis of water h plus h plus cnr rao remember this cnr rao and uh, cathode negative reduction h2 is released as cathode and o2 is released as no next natural gas a natural gas simple reaction it reacts it gives you co and h2 right now lab method lab method simple again metal reacting with uh, acid metal oxidizes itself and reduces the h next amphoteric again amphoteric also does the same it oxidizes itself and if you have a positive h it reduces the positive h so this happens here this method is important purest form of hydrogen is obtained uh, types of hydrogen atomic hydrogen when hydrogen h2 breaks into h and h that is known as atomic hydrogen or active hydrogen when during a reaction hydrogen h is produced that is known as nascent hydrogen and dihydrogen you know there are two types of dihydrogen ortho and para ortho is where the spin is similar or in the same way or in the same direction or in para is when the spin is in opposite direction right this is we studied next H2O2. It is pale blue color. How is it produced? 2-ethyl anthraquinone. You use 2-ethyl anthraquinone and you react it with H2PD. You react it with H2PD and when you react it with H2PD, it gets converted in ethyl anthraquinone and then you, you oxidize it to form um, again ethyl anthraquinone and H2O2. Okay. Then you have electrolysis method. You use H2SO4 and H2SO4 uh, at cathode you use H2 and at anode you get H2O2. Similarly, the below one. Next, the lab method, you use a peroxide and peroxide reacts with an acid to give H2O2 and BSO4 or the other exchange. You, do, you are doing simple exchange. What is the exchange? Your H plus is going towards peroxide and BA is coming towards the sulfate ions. Right. Next, the structure, you have two types of structure, Bayer structure and King's X structure. Right. You have two types of structures. Um, uh, then you have hydrogen peroxide test. What is the hydrogen peroxide test? You use K2Cr27. When it K2Cr27 reacts with hydrogen peroxide, it forms CrO5, which is butterfly in shape and blue in color. That CrO5 when reacts with acid forms a green color sulfate. Right? Next, H2O2 when reacts with Ki oxidizes I to I, I2. And that I2 reacts with starch to form what it does form? Blue color coloration. Right? TiSO4, it forms per titanic acid and gives you orange color coloration. Then it is used in two forms, restoring color of old paintings and as disinfectants. Okay. So this is it, beta. This is it from hydrogen today's class. And we'll meet you next time with continued portion. And we'll talk about a very important topic that is hardness of water. And uh, we'll finish it off in the next lecture. And hope you understood it. Uh, we'll meet you next time. Take care and all the best.